Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome once again to the CEC Edusit live lecture. Dear friends, in this session today, we would be discussing on a very interesting topic and the uh, topic is desert environment and sustainability. Dear friends, for this, today we have with us in our studios Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. Pandey is Associate Professor in Department of uh, Geography at Delhi School of Economics, University of Delhi. So, dear friends, let's welcome our guest, Dr. B. W. Pandey, and let's try to understand about the deserts and their environment, as well as the sustainability, or I would say, the livelihood of the deserts. So, first of all, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. B. W. Pandey. Dr. Pandey, welcome to the Edisit lecture. Uh, though we have studied a lot uh, uh, about the mountains, the forest, uh, as well as uh, many other components of the environment environment or of the earth we would say but today we would be covering about uh, the desert uh, so um, uh, most of the students although we don't need to explain what deserts are but when we connect uh, the desert with the environment then what we have today in this uh, session today yeah thank you very much Kitka. today topic is very interesting and very important it's not only because we're going to discuss the desert ecosystem desert uh, regions. Rather, I'll give a very comprehensive uh, discussion over what are the causes behind desertification, how deserts have developed, and certain geographical facts about the location of the deserts. Then, how the desert environment is changing? What are the impact of the climate change on desert? and how, how desert ecosystem is changing. You have heard several times that deserts are expanding, means there is a f desertification. But in certain areas you will find that deserts are shrinking, reducing in the area, means there is more anthropogenic interferences in the desert ecosystem. So all that, all that issues We'll take uh, in detail today discussion. Let me tell you first, what do you mean by desert? As a literal meaning, we say desert, an area of very scanty rainfall, area of very low temperature, area of least livelihood conditions. That's why there are very less very less flora and fauna. Very less flora and fauna, so that area is empty. Therefore, it is called desert. For example, if you go to the Sahara Desert, Kalahari Desert, miles and miles, you will find neither tree, nor any animal, neither mankind. So, it's a desert area. So, friends, desert divided on different criteria. Criteria number one is based on the rainfall. Rainfall, precipitation, the temperature, dryness condition, all these are factors. So the as you go by the definition, you find the deserts are the areas where more water is lost by evapotranspiration than falls as precipitation. This is well expressed by Bedko light to dryness ratio. This is a boundary defined by intensity of moisture deficit, rate of available precipitation to eva evaporative demand. See. For example, the, the Bedko light to dryness ratio calculated to demarcate the desert area where D is equal to R divided by L into P, means D stands for dryness ratio, R is the mean annual net radiation, P is equal to mean annual precipitation and L is a latent heat of evaporization of the water. So on the basis of this parameter we divide, classify deserts in different parts. Then deserts are also classified on the basis of dryness, location, temperature. So on the basis of, say, the location, there are 
coastal deserts, there are interior deserts, there are high altitude deserts. When we say location means that is trained for geographical location. Geographical location means if desert is located in the interior of the continent, what we say Gobi Desert situated in the interior of the continent. On other hand, coastal desert, coastal deserts are located along the sea coast. For example, Atacama Desert is a coastal desert. Similarly, number of coastal deserts found in the North America continent, say Sonoran Desert in Mexico, say Mojave Desert in US, they are found along the coast, therefore they are called coastal desert. But if the deserts are found on high altitude, over the top of the plateaus, top of the mountains, it is called high altitude and desert, mountain desert, plateau desert. For example, cold desert of India called Leh Ladakh desert. And I would like to mention here that if it is a high altitude desert, means that desert will be definitely cold desert. Higher the altitude, lower the temperature. Similarly, higher the latitude, lower the temperature. So, either it is a high latitude or high altitude, the desert will be cold desert. In China, in Tibet, Takla Makan Desert, Takla Makan Desert is also high altitude desert. In India, Leh Ladakh Desert is cold desert. So, high altitude, high latitude deserts will be cold. And if low latitude and the low altitude, that deserts, those kind of deserts will be hot desert, they are called subtropical desert, tropical deserts. On the basis of temperature, on the basis of dryness, on the basis of location, there are different, different parameters to divide the desert area. So, on the, on the basis of location and dryness, deserts are divided into five categories. They are called subtropical desert like Sahara Desert, Kalahari Desert, Tanami Desert, subtropical desert. Coastal deserts are Atacama Desert, Rain Shadow Desert like Death Valley in uh, California state of USA, North America continent, interior desert, the Gobi desert, and the polar desert, whether Arctic pole or Antarctic pole. They are polar deserts because of temperature below 0 degree Celsius throughout the year. So, these polar deserts, polar regions are so called a desert region. Then, on the basis of temperature, we say hot deserts, cold deserts. Generally, generally in the hot desert, temperature is always above 18 degrees Celsius and if it is cold desert, temperature is always below 18 degrees Celsius. So, these are different types of deserts, distribution of deserts, classification of the deserts. We say the global deserts. So, if you see the distribution of deserts, I will take you one by one. First, I will take hot desert, then second, I will take the cold desert. So, hot deserts, hot deserts are found along the west coast of the continents. Hot deserts, also called tropical deserts, subtropical deserts, found along the west coast of the continents. Why they are found along the west coast of the continents? That I would like to explain here. West coast in the tropical area, tropical and subtropical area, I mean from 40 degree latitude to 0 degree latitude, 
from subtropical to equatorial region, there is a pressure gradient and a decreasing trend of the pressure gradient. In the subtropical area, there is subtropical high pressure belt. Subtropical high pressure belt, where throughout the year, air pressure is high. This is the June subtropical area, where atmospheric circulation descent. Due to descending atmospheric circulation, both the Hadley cell and Ferrell cell converge in the upper troposphere and then they converge down. Due to converging downward, it creates high pressure. Contrarily, along the equator, there is convergence of the surface trade winds. Surface trade winds from north and the south hemisphere. These trade winds converging along the equator and then ascend. Due to ascending nature, it creates low pressure along the equator. So, there are permanent low pressure on the equator that is called equatorial low pressure belt and subtropical high pressure belt. So, trade winds are easterly and blow from subtropical high pressure belt towards equatorial low pressure belt. From subtropical high pressure belt towards equatorial low pressure belt, moving, moving these uh, winds, trade winds and by nature they are easterly, coming from the east, moving towards west. So, when they hit the continent, that easterly winds, they are called trade winds, always hit the east coast of the continents and friends, there is a heavy rainfall along the east coast. Heavy rainfall along the east coast, then rainfall gradually decreases towards west. And as you move towards west, amount of precipitation decreases because the trade winds lost their moisture. So, coming to the west, western margin of the continents, trade winds become dry. So, there is a heavy rainfall along the east margin of the continents. So, there is surplus moisture, surplus water, surplus soil moisture, very green, less vegetation. But coming to the west, gradually rainfall decreases, precipitation decreases, soil moisture decreases, vegetation decreases and vegetation decreases in all the parameters like density, height and species. Biodiversity also decreases coming to the west. And finally, finally coming to the western margin of the continent, winds become dry. Hence, it become desert. So, all the continents which have tropical and subtropical location, their west coast have desert. For example, if you look the map, so the in the North America continent, west coast of the North America, there are desert, Mojave Desert in California, USA, Death Valley itself is a desert in California, Painted Desert covering the Colorado area and further south, southern western states of the US coming to the Arizona, Arizona Desert. Phoenix Tempe area of the USA, desert area. Coming to southern part, south of the Arizona, New Mexico, California, all this belt is desert area in the US and further south, Mexico. 
In Mexico, West Coast is desert that is popularly known as Sonoran Desert. So West Coast of the North America have tropical desert. West Coast of the South America, mainly in Chile, it is Atacama Desert. Atacama Desert, now here the two mechanisms I would like to explain. There are a number of factors at Atacama Desert which you can understand very easily. Right we had discussed winds, trade winds blowing from east to west. So winds hit the east coast of the South America, there is heavy rainfall. East coast of the Brazil, east coast of the Uruguay, east coast of the Argentina is humid, heavy rainfall. Coming to the west, trade winds become dry. Second reason there you can find that the west coast of the South America, this Andes mountain. From Andes mountain, wind descend and descending winds are catabatic winds. Catabatic means getting warm, getting temperature, losing the moisture. So catabatic winds become hot and dry winds. Descending winds are always dry winds, catabatic winds. So when winds descend in the foothills, bottom of the Andes mountain, when arrive in Atacama, it become absolutely dry and hot. So it's, there is dryness, it's from the desert. And the third reason, third reason I'd like to mention that west coast of South America, throughout the Chile, throughout the Chile, there is a Humboldt cold current, also called Peru cold current. Humboldt cold current, due to effect of the cold current, there is a no evaporation, no condensation, no precipitation. Friends, due to these three important factors, they had formed the Atacama Desert, coastal, tropical, hot desert. Coming to the Africa, Africa and Asia, Europe, these three continents have one big landmass, supercontinent, that is called Mahades. Coming to Afro-Asia, Afro-Asia, Africa continent and Asia continent, or Afro-Asia. As you one piece of land, mega continent, if you'll see, this supercontinent, mega continent, called Mahades. And in this, when the trade winds enter from Pacific Ocean, hit the Asia continent, so eastern part of Asia receive heavy rainfall. So Southeast Asia, covering Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, even Myanmar, coming to Bangladesh, up to half of India. So eastern part is heavy rainfall. Coming to the west, right from western part of India, up to the west coast of the Africa continent. All this area, a desert area desert area due to dry winds, west coast. And this is the zone, this is the zone of complete reversal of wind during winter and summer. And both the duration winds are dry winds. Due to dryness, Due to dryness, there is no rainfall and it develop the desert area. So together, together, covering from Asia to Africa, in ancient geography, if you see on the map, covering the West Asia and North Africa, it was called, it is called Maghreb. 
Earlier it was called Maghreb, now it's called Afroasia. So entire Maghreb region or desert region. And when you go to the regional analysis, this region also known as MENA, M E N A, MENA. M E is Middle East, Middle East, M E and N A means North Africa. So MENA, M E N A, MENA means MENA means Middle East and North Africa. If you see Middle East, North Africa, all this big landmass are desert covering right from India, say Thar Desert to Pakistan Desert, Cholistan Desert, Helmand Desert, Helmand in Afghanistan. Then you find Daste Kabir, Daste Kabir, Central Iran. It is the Great Salt Desert, Great Salt Desert in the world, Daste Kabir in Iran. Then you find the Arabian desert that is called Rub al Khali desert, Arabian desert, then Sahara desert. Sahara as a one is the largest desert in a region, North Africa, but have several regional names and regional variations. Say, Libyan desert. Eastern Desert, Western Desert, different names in North Africa. Similarly, in South, Kalahari Desert, Namib Desert, they are in southern part of the Africa continent. Here, Sahara Desert, I would like to mention about Sahara Desert, it is the largest desert in the world. And uh, many of you have question in your mind, if you see the Sahara Desert, surrounding of Sahara in the east, the Indian Ocean, in the west, Atlantic Ocean, in the north, north of the Mediterranean Sea, if there is such a big land mass surrounded by ocean, by water, then there must be differences of the pressure due to change in season in winter and summer. Therefore, there must be complete reversal of wind direction and if it could have been reversal of wind direction, winds passing from ocean water bodies to the Sahara Desert must have carried rainfall. Sahara Desert could have been changed, but I would like to mention here, Sahara Desert had developed because of the air mass. Over Sahara Desert, in both the season, in winter season as well as in summer season. Both the season over Sahara Desert, there have been developed an anticyclonic condition that anticyclonic condition when prevail over a longer period of time, then it converted gradually as a air mass. So, air mass is an anticyclonic condition, means anticyclonic means high pressure in the center, low pressure outside. So, winds very slowly diverge. Due to divergence, very slow divergence, there is no convergence, so they remain stable over a long period of time. Friends, due to anticyclonic condition over Sahara region, winds are not able to converge. If there is a no convergence of the winds, no convergence of the air, no rainfall. So, rainfall does not occur due to divergence. Therefore, Sahara remained dry, remained desert and such a large area affected by desertification. While 
Sahara Desert along with Arabian Desert. Arabian Desert also known as <coughs> sorry, Rub al Khali Desert, Rub al Khali Desert, Sahara Desert earlier were one piece of land. one piece of land where the extent of the desert were several hundred thousand miles and uh, later on due to plate tectonics there was subsidence of the land due to land subsidence the red sea developed and sahara desert Arabian deserts were divided, separated by Red Sea. So, due to this anticyclonic condition, the Sahara Desert developed. Then coming to the Australia, in Australia continent, see, almost 80 percent land of Australia is dry land desert area. So, Great Sandy Desert, Gibson Desert, Great Victoria Desert, Simpson Desert and the Tanami Desert. I repeat Great Sandy Desert, Gibson Desert, Great Victoria Desert, Simpson Desert and Tanami Desert covering most part of the Western Australia, Northern Territory, Southern Territory and up to some extent extending up to the Queensland, New South Wales region, extending over the, the Great Basin, the Lake Ayer, even up to the Downsland, Downsland there more than 80 percent of the total area of the Australia continent desert. If you see on the map, you can find the extent of the deserts covering central part of the Australia, western part of Australia, it is all desert area. And friends, Australia lying a tropical area, therefore, winds are trade winds, winds are easterly and east coast of Australia have heavy rainfall coming to the west it become deserts. Also one can find that east coast of Australia having eastern Australian warm current. So it helps acquiring the moisture and I have heavy rainfall along the east coast of Australia. Coming to the west, western coast of Australia having western Australian cold current. Western Australian cold current, due to cold current, there is a lack of moisture, lack of precipitation, so it has been developed as a desert. Coming to the India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran region. So, in the part of Maghreb, western part of the Asia, trade winds, easterlies, which become dry in the west, and the entire from, from Aravali mountain of India to the Atlas mountain of Morocco. All this area, Maghreb region or desert region. Friends, these are tropical deserts. Now, I would like to mention there are certain temperate deserts. So, temperate deserts are those deserts which lying in the temperate area. So, between 40 to 60 latitudes between 40 to 60 latitudes they are temperate deserts 
So, in these latitudes, global circulation of wind is now opposite. In the tropical area, winds blow east to west. These are called easterlies. These are called trade winds. On other hand, in the subtropical area to the mid latitudes, temperate region, winds blowing from 30 degree latitudes to 60 degree latitudes. In other words, winds are blowing from subtropical high pressure belt to the subpolar low pressure belt in both the hemisphere subtropical high pressure belt to subpolar low pressure belt. So, these winds are very long winds and generally their direction is west to east. Therefore, these winds are known as westerlies. So, westerlies coming from the west. Therefore, these westerlies winds hit the west coast of the continents. Due to they hit the west coast of the continent, therefore, the west coast is humid. West coast is humid and east coast become dry. Therefore, therefore, when the east coast become dry, the deserts develop along the east coast. For example, Patagonia, Patagonia of the South America continent, Gobi of Mongolia, eastern part of northeastern part of China, Mongolia, Gobi Desert, Patagonia Desert. These are temperate deserts lying in the temperate latitudes, temperate conditions. And the basic reason for the formation of desert in the temperate area are the westerlies. So, westerlies moving from west to east and hit the east west coast rainfall, east coast remain dry. Then you find the third type of deserts which are found high altitude desert. High altitude desert deserts which are found over the mountains, over the plateaus, over the hills and due to prolonged dryness condition, these deserts are cold desert, dry and cold. Say, Taklamakan desert of the China that is in Tibet region, Leh Ladakh desert, there are extremely cold condition prevailing with dryness condition. So, it form cold and dry high altitude deserts. Friends, these were the distributional and the origin of the deserts and the distribution of the deserts. Now, I will take to the another part of the desert ecosystem, the sustainability, livelihood, livelihood and sustainability. As you know, deserts are either extremely hot or extremely cold. Even in the tropical area, deserts in the daytime become extremely hot and in the night, same desert become extremely cold. And constant dryness lack of water, extremely deficiency of the moisture due to lack of precipitation, lack of water. So, very less number of flora, very less number of fauna. So, the second part of this talk, so whether it is flora or fauna, both including human being, mankind have very long range of acclimatization, very long range of adaptation. 
So, life in the desert area depends on acclimatization and adaptation. Acclimatization means acclimatization with the conditions, with the temperature, with the rainfall, moisture, all that changing the temperature, range of temperature, all that conditions, both flora and fauna get acclimatized. Then whatever the livelihood conditions are there, sources of livelihood, what are the resources there including water, food. So, the human community plus other species, they adopt, adopt the condition for livelihood. That adaptation, adopting the condition is very interesting both by flora and fauna. <coughs> Sorry. Adaptation and acclimatization are the important features of the desert ecosystem, desert environment, desert ecology and the people of the desert. One by one example I would like to give you. Deserts people have a long range of migration, seasonal migration, transhumans. So, migration of people along with their animals due to change in season called transhumans. So, you can find, you can find large range of transhumans by the local people, indigenous people, people living in the desert. Let us give example, the Blackfoots, Blackfoots of the North America. Crowmen of the North America. They migrate over during winter and, and uh, summer from the west coast of the USA over to Sierra Nevada hills, mountains. Sosonian people, they speak Sosonian language called Sosonian people. They migrate because during summer season, extreme deficiency of moisture, extreme deficiency of water, extreme barren land, no grassland, no livelihood. So, they do migrate little upward in search of grazing land. Similarly, in the Atacama desert area, then you come to Sahara Desert, southern part of Sahara Desert, there is sub desert type condition, semi desert condition that is popularly known as Sahel, a very large area where Maasai people live. Maasai people, the tribe, the largest tribal population in the world. Maasai and you must have heard about Maasai Mara. Maasai tribe live in the sub-Saharan region, sub-Saharan countries and they do migrate several hundred kilometer, thousand kilometer in search of grazing land. Similarly, coming to the Rub al Khali, Rub al Khali that is Arabian desert. In Arabian desert, Rub al Khali desert, people live, they are called Al Badia. Their original name is Al Badia. They are also called Baddu. By European, they are known as Bedouins. And because of their culture, Al Badia people also known as Ruwala. So, you can have different name Al Badia, Baddu, Bedouins, Ruwala. And 
they migrate over thousand kilometer in winter and summer. During winter, they move inward the desert, and during summer, they move outward from the desert because inside desert in summer season, absolute dryness. So they move out in summer. The central Asian desert covering from Kazakhstan to Mongolia, this is the zone of the people living, they are called, they are called Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz people migrate between the Hindu Kush region, Pamir Nat particularly, they migrate from Pamir Nat up to Ural mountain, <clears throat> from Pamir to Ural mountain. The longest migrated people, very, very long scale of the transhumans. So they carry along with their animals, keep on moving in summer season, move from Pamir to Ural mountain, northward. Northward movement during summer season and when it comes winter, they are reversed. In winter season, they move from Ural back to the Pamir. Now, because in winter, they become cold and in summer, the temperature is moderate because it is mid latitudes. So, how they adopt? They carry two kinds of tent. When in winter season, they require heavy tent. So, they live in the heavy tent that is called owl. Owl and they live in the group that is called kema. They live with kema. They live with in owl. Kema means many people living together because in winter season nights are longer. They have to save their life as well as to save the lives their livestock. They live in the kema, live in the owl. But when comes summer season, in summer season, nights are short, days are longer and there is moderate temperature. So, in summer season, they live maybe very scattered, they live in a light tent, that light tent of summer season of the Kyrgyz known as yurt, Y-U-R-T, yurt. So, they live in yurt, they live scattered in summer season. So, the adaptation with the conditions, so long range of adaptation, long range of acclimatization. Coming to the Australia, the tribal community who are the native people of Australia and you must have heard, they are called aborigines. Aborigines, aborigines of the Australia, they are native people and they have all the way adopted, acclimatized with the conditions of the, conditions of the desert and they have developed their culture to live in both the extreme condition of winter and summer. So, aborigines, black fellows and bindibu, there are different sub names of the tribal people, tribal people of the Australia. So, aborigines, they paint their body, they are very fond of painting. They are hunters and food gatherers. 
So hunting according to the season. And hunting animals again according to the season. So adaptation by the aborigines, black fellows and Bindibu community. Similarly, if you come to Kalahari Desert, in Kalahari Desert, tribal communities are different subgroups. Kalahari Desert extended from Namibia to South Africa. And throughout Namibia to South Africa, Kalahari Desert divided by River Orange. River Orange, River Orange divides Kalahari Desert in two parts. North of the Orange, North of the Orange, the desert lived by Bushmen. Bushmen. The territory of the Bushmen. And south of the river Orange, the territory of Khoi Khoi. Khoi Khoi, known as Hot and Tot. Hot and Tot, also called Khoi Khoi. So the river Orange divides the territory of Bushmen and Hot and Tot. Extended in both Savannah, Namib, Kalahari Desert is again dry. So how did the Bushmen they adopt? Bushmen people, they paste mud the entire body to save from extreme hot condition of the summer season. And their life, the utensils, household conditions based on the different animals and birds. You have must have heard about ostrich. Ostrich. So the kind of the pots, pottery they required at their household level. So they divide the eggs of the ostrich and they form the cups, other kinds of bowls and keep on hunting and food gathering living conditions. Similarly, hot and tart people. Most men hot and tart are affected by statopagia. Friends, I would like to mention that statopagia is a kind of human body problem which developed due to extreme shortage of water in the body. The conditions, shortage of moisture in the air. So the condition of statopagia developed. So among all the desert community in the world, you can find that the worst effect of statopagia found either in the Bushman people and mainly the women population of the Bushmen and the female women population of the Khoi Khoi Hot and Tart. Friends, these are the adaptation, livelihood, sustainability by the local community, human community in desert area. Similarly, there is a long scale adaptation, adaptation by the flora and fauna. I would like to mention that you must have you must have heard you must have heard that the camels camels are camels are known as camels are known as the aeroplane of the desert. Why? Because camels have developed the, the adaptive capacity to survive in the desert. You can find the biological, biological evolution of the desert in the camels in the desert in such a manner that they have adopted extreme dryness even for a long, 
longer duration. Similarly, other kind of flora and fauna, other kind of flora and fauna in the desert like reptiles, different kinds of reptiles found in desert, they have adopted the condition of dryness. Birds. So, and coming to the trees, the kind of kind of trees, flora found in desert. So, floral floral acclimatization, floral adaptation is also very interesting. When there is a there is a dryness, there is a no moisture in the air. Very much deficiency of moisture in the air. So, the upper growth of the flora is largely affected by dryness. So, upper growth is very less and plants penetrate their roots inside the ground to, to have moisture, to get the moisture. Therefore, very deep rooted plants in the desert area, upper growth is very low. That is why they are called xerophytes. Vegetation in the desert called xerophytes because they have xerophytic nature conditions. Similarly, when the people living in the desert area, there is certain adventurous tourism in the desert. So, when we go to the adventure tourism in desert, you will find that people, they set the, the large number of leaves, pots in the night. As you know, early morning or after say midnight, temperature become almost freezing point. So, cold air touch the object, well little moisture get converted as a dew. It is very interesting. So, though those uh, tourists who live in the tent in the Sahara desert, Kalahari desert, any tropical desert, so they collect water through the dew, a kind of adaptation. So, a long scale adaptation by the community, by the flora, by the fauna. One kind of uh, Adaptation I would like to show you, see in the map how the house is made of mud and above mud we will find haze. So, the kind of house they construct, this it, it is a called indigenous technology, indigenous knowledge, this, this kind of house or sweet house. It is not so hot boiled in summer season because the, the haze over hatching over the mud keep temperature under control. Therefore, they are able to survive in the extreme hot condition in the desert region. And kind of the adaptation which I mentioned uh, about the xerophytes, you can see on the screen. The large area, large area of the xerophytes go to any desert in the world where conditions are extreme dryness. So, flora, fauna, community all have extreme level of adaptation and acclimatization. The last point I would like to mention that deserts are fragile ecosystem. Deserts are vulnerable ecosystem. Deserts are marginal region. Deserts are marginal ecosystem. So, any kind of change in desert means there is change in the natural ecosystem. It could be, it could be a change of the destruction like change destruction you can have, must have heard about Pokharan, Chagai Hill, Pokharan in India, Chagai, Chagai region of Pakistan, Afghanistan border, where nuclear test, kind of 
destructive changes. Also, the constructive changes, constructive changes I'd like to mention, like the inundation of the canals, constructions of the canals in the desert area. You must have heard about Indira Gandhi Canal. Indira Gandhi Canal developed by diverting the water of river in this system, rivers, satellites from the thin dam covering to the dry region, third desert region, Sri Ganga Nagar, Bikaner, Jaisalmer, and Barhme districts of Thar, Rajasthan. Though these are constructive effort, there is a positive impact on flora and fauna, economy, society, but as a desert ecosystem, there is, there is alteration. A natural ecosystem converted to man-made ecosystem. From natural forestry to social forestry, from natural vegetation to artificial vegetation. So these are different changes, maybe by positive or by negative. But desert ecosystem, if there are interferences or continue, there will be change over the fragile, delicate desert ecosystem in the world. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for uh, giving us such a productive session with the help of which uh, today we are able to understand about the desert and the environment as well as uh, the livelihood or if I would say the sustainability of the deserts. It was all possible because of you. Dear friends, if you have uh, any queries, you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nick.in so that the next time when uh, Dr. Pandey visits our studio, uh, we would love to solve your queries mm, as well as friends, if you want to access this particular lecture you can access it with the help of YouTube as we daily upload the lectures for you so that it becomes convenient for you to view these lectures ample of time so that it becomes convenient for you to study your course material uh, so that it becomes easier for you uh, to widen the horizons of your knowledge with this note uh, thank you sir thank you once again for giving your precious time thank you